Why don't we recycle energy? You're hitting the nail on the head. We would like people to be recycling their fuel in the same way as they recycle other things. Your technology is we're going to refine that energy, that carbon, out of the atmosphere, combine it with hydrogen and water, and then that's the same as gas or jet fuel? Yeah, yeah, it's chemically the same. Uh, no pollutants. So, for example, our diesel burns completely clean. None of that black smoke you see from trucks when they go up hills. Right. Completely clean. But yeah, it's chemically identical. So this is our plant. Great to have you here. Everything here is a working model, full process working, and we are capturing CO2 from the atmosphere right here. Think of it as like a big cooling tower. Large fan, the fan draws the CO2 in. Chemical reaction, and we capture the CO2. Wouldn't there be more carbon to capture by dirty, naughty factories? No, it's uniformly distributed. So, so we could, yeah, we could anywhere. put one of these plants in the middle of Beijing, or we could right. put it in the middle of the Sahara Desert. You would capture the same amount of atmospheric CO2. So we as a species have put it in, so we as a species should be taking it out. Well, that's our choice, but I think we have to, or find somewhere else to live. This is the fuel that we make. It looks exactly the same as any other fuel. Right. It's very, very high chemical uh, performance. Right. Higher performance fuel than the stuff you buy at the pumps today. So it's better than the pumps, it's carbon neutral, and theoretically it would be cheap to make because you're refining the energy that's already out there in the atmosphere. Yeah, you're using the CO2 from the atmosphere. You're only feedstock. The only thing you're consuming is renewable electricity. Right. But here's the interesting thing. A carbon neutral fuel that's compatible with any vehicle in the world today. Right. So that car you just drove up in, we can make that carbon neutral tomorrow. Wow. Any vehicle, any performance vehicle, any battered old truck, airplanes, we're compatible with all of those. Which is significant because nobody's making electric tractors or electric planes. Right. Do you have to do any modifications? No. Wow. So transportation is about 20% of the CO2 emissions. How are we going to decarbonize that? There's a billion cars in the world. So if we all uh, go electric, $50,000 for an electric car, that's $50 trillion. Then you've got to deliver energy and electricity to each car. It's a massive change. Yeah. Alternatively, why don't we just change the fuel? The price to you at the pump will be the same. H having something like a, a carbon neutral gas isn't even enough. We've got to start going negative. We've got to actually pull carbon out of the atmosphere. Now, can, can this do that and what's the plan We can there? take the CO2 generated here and bury that underground and you get to negative emissions. Right. It's a hugely important thing. And how many do you need to scale it to get to carbon negative? You need less of these than there are power stations in the world today to net emissions out to zero. And how, so how, how many is that? It's in the region of tens of thousands. If we are taking measures as we should be to remove emissions elsewhere, now you start getting to an overall negative emissions from the world. Why isn't the world rushing to Squamish, BC and saying, can we please make 100,000 of these? So first of all, we're open and ready to receive the world. Um, secondly, we've, we've really just got to proof of concept here and it's working. So the next step for our business is to expand across the globe, yeah. make carbon neutral fuel. And when the scientists and the governments decide that they need to do negative emissions, the technology is ready.